Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the Scientific Committee of the National Science Foundation for inviting me to give this presentation on vitamin D effects on boosting the immunity and prevention of COVID-19 related complications and deaths. This is from myself and my colleague, uh, Dr. Atula Polonovita from Australia. Neither one of us have uh, any conflict of interest related to this presentation. So, vitamin D is not only a vitamin, but also an essential hormone, which is critical for our survival, procreation, and staying healthy. The major portion of vitamin D requirement in human is supposed to obtain from the exposure to sunshine by converting the <coughs> It in the skin. The most common cause of vitamin D deficiency is a lack of sunshine, UV exposure, or avoidance of the sunlight due to various reasons. It's important to note that the assessing vitamin D status, the measurement of 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentration is the only way one could do that. The question is why we got into this mess of current vitamin D pandemic in addition to the COVID-19 pandemic which coinciding now. Years ago, we, we were used to exposed to sunshine two hours a day and the average serum level by looking at the tribes in Western Africa, we know that it's between 40 and 60 nanograms per mil, which we think that the healthiest vitamin D range on average about 45 nanograms per mil. Nevertheless, the current average of vitamin D level in most people, almost two-thirds, is about 15 nanograms per milliliter. Question is why we got into this mess? Mostly due to the indoor living structure, too much of comfort, and avoidance of sunshine. Vitamin D deficiency is the commonest nutritional disorder in the world. It used to be iron deficiency, but vitamin D deficiency is affecting nearly half the population any time during the, during the year. Importantly, it's the easiest correctable cost-effectively the nutrition deficiency in the world as well. Very easy to correct it. It deficiency causes rickets in children, which is not common nowadays because the, the most of the milk products and the, the, uh, <coughs> fortified with the vitamin D and also stimulation in adults, which is unfortunately still prevailing at a higher incidence. So stimulation associated with the, the poor balance and therefore falls, bone loss, osteoporosis and fractures. So all this uh, uh, association with many other diseases as I'm going to show in the summary in the next slide. You know, most of these disorders like hyperlipidemia, hypertension, obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes, all related to metabolic syndrome, which is uh, every year the prevalence is increasing, in, especially in the Southeast Asian countries, due to mostly due to the change of lifestyle. Important thing is all these are related to vitamin D deficiency. There's always a connection between these disorders and vitamin D deficiency, which further worsen the syndrome. So let's look at some evidence supporting the relationship between the vitamin D and COVID-19. Currently, there are more than 50 adequately powered large clinical studies undergoing globally in important centers on looking at the effects of vitamin D on COVID-19. Only a handful of studies published so far, out of which I'm going to show you some data. Secondly, the vast majority of the people, I'm talking about a 90 to 94% of the people admitted to ICU with COVID-19 complications or died with COVID-19 uh, has been shown to have a severe vitamin D deficiency as denoted by less than 10 or 12 nanograms per milliliter when the normal range is more than 30 nanograms per milliliter. The highest incidence of COVID-related deaths are occurring in countries located in the northernmost and southernmost latitude above 42nd parallel. 
and has it been related to the lack of uh, exposure to UV radiance in these countries? Now, these are the data I'm going to show you from United Kingdom, the Blacks, Asian, and ethnic minorities with a darker skin color. They are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, <coughs> ICU admission, and indeed the mortality almost like a five to tenfold higher than the white uh, people in these countries. So what are the evidence that vitamin C causally related to <coughs> COVID-19 clinical outcomes. For example, in person with persons with COVID-19, for each standard deviation increase in serum 24 had decreases, the, uh, the odds of having the disease also increases. In other words, the complications, deaths are re reduced by having vitamin D sufficiency. There are multiple observation and ecological studies published shown strong association with between vitamin D status and the COVID-19 outcomes. Fourthly, the vitamin D regulation, one of the most important hormonal system in humans, is called renin angiotensin system that control our blood pressure, electrolyte balance, and indeed the immune system most physicians are not aware of. So this is a system when go <coughs> out of control as in COVID-19, generate large quantities of cytokines from T cells and lead to so-called cytokine storm, leading to acute respiratory distress syndrome, pneumonia, <coughs> and indeed deaths. So the combination of the effects of vitamin D in reducing these cytokine storms and others and improving the innate and adaptive immune system, most importantly, stabilize the epithelial barriers will prevent COVID-19 entering into the human body. This is an older slide. I showed, uh, put that to demonstrate the effect of two things. Firstly, the, the effect of males are much higher than females. And secondly, the death rates are mostly occurring in the older people. And if you get into the 75 plus, and these death rates are going to reach about 90 plus in this range. So there is also a so relationship between the lack of exposure to sunshine and the death from COVID-19, but in part this is muddled up by the, uh, the lack of humidity. High humidity prevents uh, COVID growth and the survival of COVID in ambient temperatures. For example, my colleague Grant and his team has published, uh, so as others, Postulating that 70% of the death in nursing homes in the United Kingdom and the United States could have been prevented by supplementing them proactively with adequate doses of vitamin D3 right from the beginning. Although they are getting about 400 to 800 international units of vitamin D, these are really dropped in the bucket. It doesn't even touch in preventing COVID. They need to take minimum of 4,000 units and upwards per day to protect fully from COVID-19 by stimulating the innate immune system. All that and these are natural system and nothing to do with the medication or some um, black magic. The combination of advanced age, poor health, particularly the comorbidities as I've demonstrated in the previous slide with hypertension, diabetes and obesity, etc. And the vitamin D division, they eat a lethal combination for these people. But only the correctable factor of the, that is a vitamin D division, which costs no more than five to eight US dollars per person per year. So let's sh sh let me show you the cost benefit of vitamin D therapy as we published back in Sterile Biochemistry and Molecular Biology Journal in 2018. And the cost of correcting vitamin D deficiency is less than 0.01 of the cost of dealing with the complication associated with the vitamin D deficiency. Again, I illustrate about six or seven common chronic diseases. That's what I'm referring to. Though, despite this available data for the long time now, the vast majority of the population, indeed 50% of the population or more, during some time of the year, become kept up vitamin D deficient, which is unquestionable. Observation and ecological studies 
on COVID-19 respect to vitamin D 25 hydroxy vitamin D level has published very convincing data on beneficial effects of having higher serum 24 hydroxy vitamin D. This has been shown that there is a strong inverse correlation that means when a level of serum 24 hydroxy is high, the incidence, risk, severity and death from COVID-19 is low. That's the beauty of that. The, I have summarized the uh, clinical outcomes of patients or people with COVID-19 in blue here and the level of vitamin D necessary or the correlates with these clinical outcomes. I'm going to uh, <coughs> let me show you the, the two extremes. People who died from COVID or dying from COVID has a very low vitamin D level, severe vitamin D deficiency. People have a sim asymptomatic disease for the mostly carriers and spreading the disease, as well as those with the mild disorders like having flu, they have a higher vitamin D deficiency in the vitamin D <coughs> status. Moreover, people who are less than 12 nanograms a mill have been shown to be 14 times more likely to die from COVID. So imagine the, how easy to intervene to prevent this death and the necessary to avoid admission to COVID-19. One of the most strongest effects is to change or correct this uh, vitamin D deficiency back to its normality of more than 30 nanograms per mil. As I said, it doesn't cost more than six or seven dollars per person per even year. But ICU cost, as you know, in the countries from varies. It could be from five thousand dollars to hundred twenty-five thousand dollars during uh, managing one patient in ICU. <clears throat> the other way to looking at it is the look at the serum twenty-four hydroxy vitamin D concentration, about thirty nanograms per mil, and the clinical outcome in this case the cases per million on y-axis and serum 24 hydroxy vitamin D on uh, x-axis. As you see, the level above 30 nanograms per mil virtually has uh, no symptomatic cases. And this y-axis actually is on nanomoles per liter, but you can convert this to nanograms by dividing it by 2.5 number. <clears throat> Here's a slide from UK to demonstrate the effect of uh, darker skin color on hospital deaths per 100,000 in y-axis. Here in the x-axis, various ethnic groups, they have okay, look at it. Those who are with the darker skin color, let's call it BAME group, have the highest mortality per 100,000 <coughs> persons with COVID. You can see the common denominator in this all this is a darker skin color since these pe people are living in the northern latitude like in northern U uk their ability to generate vitamin d is, <clears throat> is markedly reduced so therefore they are highly vulnerable to develop covid complication and dying from it this is another uh, uh, neat study from uk comparing the white versus uh, BME doctors on on the outcomes. You can see that the, the mean level of white doctors who died is about 82, whereas those who with the, uh, the BME or darker skin color died at age uh, mean age of 52. So we had 30 years of difference between ages of doctors, which is a homogeneous group which exclude the social economic kind of. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, issues but shows that clearly there's a issue with related to lack of vitamin D in this patient. So basically the, those with uh, the darker skin color with low vitamin D had a markedly high death rate at a younger age group. So let's look at the other aspect of uh, serum 24 hydrox concentration. Ideal range is 30 to 60, and in COVID era, could be even 40 to 60 nanograms per mil. That's what is necessary to prevent multiple disorders, and in this case, COVID-19. And we suggest that the level to be maintained between 40 and 60, in part because of the people who are dying from COVID has multiple comorbid conditions, then they need to have a higher concentration of 24 hydroxy vitamin D 
to prevent uh, during complication and death. So there is a five times reduction of the ICU admission in some study shows up to 14 times reduction <coughs> in those who were taking supplements compared to none. So people had taken vitamin D supplement had a much less requirement to get admitted to ICUs and die from less. Secondly, the uh, hospital length of stay has significantly reduced so as uh, there are multiple other benefits. So what are the other recent data on COVID-19? Since the time is tight, I'm going to show you only three or four studies data. That's one of those uh, important things. When you look at the latitude versus mortality from COVID-19, you can see clearly that the countries away from the equator I had the highest mortality per million population. Of course, this is not the only reason they die from uh, Belgium. In part, was the governmental inability to act promptly and taking the right actions to control the disease. A classic example in the United Kingdom, they have been relying on uh, the very much flawed concept of RO number and the, that uh, estimation and the concept was completely wrong. And then they relied on the herd immunity, which again probably may not even happen. And consequently, many, many people died from COVID rather than taking the proper action. As I show in a minute, wearing face masks and keeping the distance, etc. So let me show one slide out of many I can show you on the effect of mass gatherings on incidents of COVID. We saw yesterday, <coughs> even in Sri Lanka, there are a whole bunch of festivals. Similarly, any large gathering can cause significant problems because, as I said, only many people who spread the disease unwittingly, unknowingly, are asymptomatic carriers. I will explain that a little bit more later. Here's a slide from uh, what you call the Memorial Day. is a very famous uh, holiday in the U.S. and they had a <coughs> mass gatherings of parties on this particular day, it increased the new cases by 30 to 40 percent two weeks later. So this is just one example. There are many examples to show that mass gathering like this or book fairs or some other gatherings or festivals will markedly increase the mortality and, uh, and the <clears throat> incident rates from COVID. So we should not encourage any mass gathering under any circumstances. And politician and the health department folks must take this notice rather than approving these uh, harmful uh, events. Here are the three things, uh, basic things we all need to be adhered. Firstly, wearing a protective mask, N95 possible, or K95 in some countries. Wearing just simple clothing, cloth mask, the protection is probably less than a third of what one would expect. So it could be a placebo in some people. They can indeed spread the disease to others as well. Just by wearing cloth mask will not protect projectile of micro particles and the micro molecules getting out of the nose and the mouth of these people and therefore they continue to infect people. Again, the, I haven't seen the health department or the task force uh, even thinking about this uh, important thing and just wearing face, face mask will not help preventing the disease. Secondly, there's some effect of washing hands, it's not major, but most importantly, avoiding by looking at the rate of PCR positivity and the skin color or the ethnic groups. Here we're look, looking at it, the PCR positive rate on y-axis and the serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D on nanograms per milliliter on x-axis. As you see, compared to the white non-Hispanic groups, blacks and Hispanics had a higher incidence of PCR positivity. When you look at the weather, look at uh, 20 nanograms per mil or 40 nanograms per mil, this dif <coughs> difference of ethnic ratio still persists. So zero positivity clearly goes up on people with the darker skin color and those with the low serum vitamin D levels. So if they may be able to manage to keep the level about 30 nanograms a mil, which is fairly easy thing to do, for example, in tropical countries by exposing to sunshine for 30 to 45 minutes each day 
or take it through vitamin D supplementation, the deaths can be reduced by 40%. It's a huge achievement that can be done at virtually no cost. <clears throat> this is a, a recent publication by Kaufman et al. studying at 192,000 patient database showing that again the positivity rate and the relationship between the <clears throat> serum level of 24 hydroxy vitamin D. As you see that it's a marked reduction, or in this case 40% reduction of uh, PCR positivity in those with the uh, higher serum 24 hydroxy vitamin D. <clears throat> this uh, the study published uh, well to be published very soon from what you what I call is miracle in Andalusia, Spain. It's an experiment what they did uh, recently. Slide A shows the hospital admissions in this uh, large province in Spain. There's a very high incidence of COVID. What you can see is the the winter time there was a high peak of COVID. Summertime is basically disappeared due to sunshine. <clears throat> then it came back in September, October, November. But end of end of November, they decided to give uh, vitamin D to the community and in hospital particularly. See what happened to the incidence. Otherwise, in, in January, the peak would have been even higher than this. We are talking about 350 here, probably about 7, 700, but that disappeared because of vitamin D. Here's the same data looking at the intensive care unit, unit admis, admissions per day and again when they applied vitamin D to these patients it intensive care unit admission markedly reduced so there's no need to expand intensive care beds and ventilators etc it's, it's redundant all what we need to actually to increase the population vitamin D level about 30 and all this unnecessary expenditure can be <coughs> avoided. If you look at the deaths in uh, Andalusia, you can see the same phenomena. You had a large number of deaths per day in the, up to about May. Then the summer came, summertime there were very few deaths. And again, winter came, it increases, and vitamin D basically wiped off that death rates. <coughs> this slide I'm showing you the comparison between the Andalusia and the United Kingdom, which is the failed control. Uh, they failed to control uh, pretty badly uh, COVID-19. In Andalusia, you can see that uh, the introduction of vitamin D in uh, mid-November markedly reduced the, uh, the death rates in this, that country. In, uh, whereas in the UK, they did nothing and they rejected the use of vitamin D through the, through the unwise and uh, the flawed reports of NICE. And scan. There are two groups, uh, two uh, committees appointed by the by the uh, by the government, which came up with a very very uh, flawed recommendations. So let's look at the uh, countries in the Southeast Asia, including Sri Lanka, regarding misleading statistics, partly due to limited PCR testing. So in the absence of community PCR testing, as uh, Sri Lanka did till uh, mid-October and antibody testing they never did. It is estimated that there are between 10 and 40 COVID-19 infected persons, mostly asymptomatic carriers in the community. To assess the number of real number of people who are PCR positive uh, are likely to be infected, the reported prevalence must be multiplied by factor of 20 to obtain the real number. For example, if the reported number as we had between uh, April, May, June, about 5,000, at that time we had PCR positive patients in the community, at least 100,000. Now you can imagine the number of patients in the community in the range of about a million. You just multiply by the reported PCR positivity by 20, that's the number of actual people <coughs> the community infected. In other words, uh, it is almost like 1 in 20 people will likely to have PCR positivity. And this is not surprising when, they, when the government is doing the rapid antigen test. They find the same ratio in the community, but none of them seems to be extrapolating that to what's happening in the country. Average, they're getting random uh, 
the rapid antigen state period, but one in 20 or more positive. So that means it could be even more than a million people affected. Mostly 85-90% are asymptomatic. Question people ask that whether the medical care is responsible for the low reported number of uh, the, the number of people with COVID in Asian countries. Answer is of course no. I'll show you why. Uh, there is up to 64 differences in the number of hospitals, ICU beds per capita, and healthcare uh, delivery or the GDP in the Asian countries, South Asian countries. For example, if you compare, compare the Bangladesh versus Singapore, this ratio is even higher. So irrespective of what healthcare benchmark used, the reported deaths, <coughs> as uh, this definition, if you can read that, are uniformly low in with and little different between the mentioned tropical countries. Only exception is in India, is, uh, due to multiple <coughs> other, re other reasons. <coughs> So the answer is for healthcare influence these uh, the statistic uh, absolutely not. So let's summarize the, what we said so far. The reason for low prevalence of death rates in tropical countries is due to, mostly due to the very very few numbers of PCR tests have been done. In fact, up to up to October, the number of PCR tests done in Sri Lanka, for example, is less than three percent of what is supposed to have done for compared to. Uh, to industrialized countries. So the, the low rates are due to two things. One is a logistical error because they were not doing adequate PCR. Secondly, the natural reasons, the exposure to sunshine and having no cases of severe vitamin D deficiency. So low report, reported cases is artificial and, and it has nothing to do with the reality. And in fact, the, the, it has nothing to do with the curfews or lockdown in any country. You know, uh, we need to look at those data sets. So let me show you one meta-analysis, recent one, showing the effectiveness of controlling COVID-19 with the vitamin D. Except one study, as you see here, all has shown something like 75% reduction of the incidence, complications, and deaths from COVID-19. This is a relative risk we are looking at it. Only one study, which is study was flawed due to multiple reasons, it failed to show that. So here I summarize the vitamin D benefits in controlling COVID. It stimulates the vitamin immune system. It's a potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. It's antimicrobial properties, prevention of complication, prevention of cytokine storm. It produces antibodies and increase the level of ACE2, which is a protective component in humans. So this slide summarizes various options available to treat COVID and most important, we believe they maintain the high level of serum <coughs> 25-hydroxy to boost in the immune system, so thereby prevention of uh, deaths and leading to full recovery. So let me give you one slide on which, why we should not rely on a vaccine. Vaccine is good if it's effective and affordable and there's no complication. One thing is expensive for so most people in the world cannot afford. Safely, the MRA-based vaccine have serious adverse effects. That is, problem is storage, transportation, and need at least two doses in few weeks apart. <coughs> so, let me show you two slides very briefly to show the available uh, studies. So, this is a slide show in June, where we also had a registered study to to prevent uh, COVID-19 infection in the country, but it was not allowed to do that study. In this study, we are pl planning to use 400,000 trash units in quarantine centers on 2,000 subjects with 50% placebo control. <coughs> Here's a slide from October. I think uh, the registered studies and list has actually grown up. These are large clinical studies, you can see the doses they are using, some people are using 1.2 million, 600,000, 500,000, 400,000 international unit as a single dose, which is the right thing to do for <coughs> these clinical studies. <coughs> so, adequate vitamin D level has been associated with the reduced introduction incidence of severity and of many viral diseases. 
to import of Sri Lanka is actually also reduced, significantly reduced the complication and uh, death from dengue, but we are not, does not seem to be practiced in this country. So the mechanistic action of uh, vitamin D, again briefly I'm going to summarize in three slides. If the death from coronavirus, including this pathway, <coughs> I'm not going to go into details, but it's basically to act through the ACE receptors and in the, in the, in the presence of vitamin D actually suppress renin, end up with the prevention of cytokine stroke, thereby reducing the uh, complication like pulmonary edema and indeed it's cut off or prevent completely the acute respiratory distress syndrome. So it's uh, the, the remarkable effect, <coughs> multiple effect of having adequate level of calcitriol in active vitamin D in this case. So the ACE and ARBs particularly used for hypertension and renal protection should have a beneficial effect on these patients. So those who are on already, there's no reason to take them off from their medication list. The last three slides I'm going to summarize in the concept diagram again. Vitamin D can affect entry prevention and the, the improve the ACE2 and therefore the destruction of virus. <coughs> ACE and ARB blocks the renin angiotensin system and indeed the cocktail of antiviral medication has a little effect on uh, controlling this. So, Considering the above mention, I said uh, in acute situation in hydrogen group, they are going to need uh, larger doses of single doses or so multiple doses of uh, over the over few days to boost their immune system to prevent complication and death. This should be followed up by with the maintenance dose of between 4,000 and 5,000 international units or 50,000 units a week or every other week to maintain the high level. There have been no adverse effects reported in high these above mentioned doses of vitamin D supplementation, including in those with uh, COVID-19. So, in summary, the maintenance serum 25 hydroxy concentration about 30 nanograms mil will require this amount of vitamin D and prevent complication and deaths. In emergency situation and in ICU, for example, or admission, somebody admit complication, they need a higher amount to boost the vitamin D level. Even the standard dose is actually a placebo, has zero effect benefit. These strategies will save lives and indeed the economy of the country and there's absolutely no reason to have a lockdown, no curfew ever, if you practice simple guidelines. So, vitamin D deficiency induced disorders are commonly but all these are preventable acute adequate vitamin d level prevent covid-19 related complication and indeed deaths thank you for listening this presentation have a great day